Good evening. I Rapstein with your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening as we're here now on Wednesday, the 19th of uh, October, 2022, and the time about 6, 10 p.m. Central Time. So President Biden laid out his new well thought out plan. You know where I'm headed with this, that uh, they're going to give you $70 a barrel to replenish the oil reserves. So in other words, we sold it at 90 because we had bought it many years ago and we're going, being America, the we, and we're gonna buy it back at 70. So big oil, we want you to stop paying dividends, stop buying back your stock, go out and pump that oil so we can buy it from you at 70, which I, President Biden, have determined is a good price for you. How do you think that's playing? Enough. I'm not here to bash the president, okay? I don't think anything's going to happen. Number two, what if it doesn't go back to 70? That's, I don't, don't tell Joe that, but could could happen. All right. As for the marketplace, remember what you're in now. You're in earnings season. You have the headwind right behind you of interest rates keep creeping higher. You're at four and a half percent on the two year. That's a big number. It's going to drag money out of the stock market because you can say, hey, I can park money for a little bit here. Uh, it's not going to make me money, but I'm not going to lose my shirt. Inflation, I don't know what I'm giving up. If you think inflation is falling, that's one thing. We had the Fed speak go on today. Mr. Bullard was out, uh, Evans, uh, Kasharki, they were all speaking. And there's a common theme here. We're going to 75 basis point hike in November, and nobody's going to get cornered as to what December is going to do, but they don't see the need to stop raising rates at this point. So for the rest of this year, you have more rate hikes coming. I think the 75 is baked in for November. December, why would you make a decision here? It doesn't make sense. If you continue with strong jobs data, and if you don't see a break, a meaningful break in the CPI, what do you do? Is it 50 or 75? What if CPI gets a little stronger? And what if core CPI goes up again? They're not going back to 50 points then. They're staying at 75. It's too hard to call right here. You don't have to make that call. The second thing is we have the uh, next week, we get the European Central Bank. Then we follow on November 2nd. They're on the, I think the 27th. We're the, uh, the second Bank of England's the third. So you got all this coming and then we get jobs reports and then CPI reports again. So you got a lot ahead of you. Right now you got a mixed bag, but I'm hearing things that are a bit bothersome. Some companies are seeing the headwinds of the dollar. Not the best thing. Some are doing real well. As you saw, Netflix did well. Tesla didn't hit its numbers. They fell back for whatever reasons. Um, Mr. Musk has said he's got a plan now to make Tesla bigger than Apple, everybody else. I get it. And by the way, never count this guy out. He is, he is our business Einstein. You may not think that I do. The man is unbelievably bright. He, he thinks in a different way and he executes. It's two part. Not everything he does is going to work. You know that. Nobody can work all the time. You don't match it by that. Remember, you're in the Hall of Fame in baseball in America if you hit what? 333. So out of three bats, you struck out twice and you're in the Hall of Fame. You're phenomenal if you're 400. It's like nobody can believe it. You still struck out six out of 10 times. That's what I'm trying to say. Baseball's life. It's wonderful. Study it. You get a feel for it. So let's go to the markets and see what we've got now that you've heard my little spiel. When you come to the S&P, we are up 2.75. So you might think, well, today we didn't have a big rally. I, I know it felt like, oh, we're pulling back. It's up still for the week. Very nice. And we're into the latter part of the week. This was the center. Now we're at the latter part. If you got a hard rally, you could possibly argue you'd get to 39.13. I think that'd be very difficult. It's over 200 points away. And you have, as I just said, all the banks coming on board. I don't think you're going there. When I take a look at what you've got here, let's just call this the whipsaw. This is what the markets look like a maestro at a symphony. 
You've seen them. Well, that's what prices are doing right now. They're, they're sort of doing one of those things. We do have a pattern of higher and lows, higher highs. Now, I'm thinking of something. You know, I've never given away the, uh, the coding for this. Uh, write me if you'd like to know about the coding. I have all the coding. And if you have it, your own charting software, because not everybody uses mine, hey, if you're a subscriber to my research, I'd be happy to give it to you, okay? So I'm thinking that we're gonna do some of these things to help our traders along. I've already offered and I've had a lot of takers and they're modifying their slow stochastics to emulate mine, but I've never given this away. And this is my own study. I created this from scratch. I love it. It's the easiest thing. If you got a young child at home, what's an uptrend, Betty or Paul? You know, I'm just making up names here. Oh. Higher lows, higher highs. What would break the trend? Well, if you take that low out, mom or dad, that would do it. Okay. What about a downtrend? Can you show me one? Well, you'll be amazed how they get excited about it. I created it for my son when he was 13. He's near 40, so it gives you an idea. And he still looks at a chart and says, I can't believe it. It, it sticks with you. Here you are just sitting at the 18-day average, but the trend is up. So are people buying? Well, if they are, they're buying the 18-day average. They probably have a stop under right there. They're hoping to get up to what number? Probably the Bollinger Band, that 3808. I have my doubts that you're going up to the 100-day average before all these banks get out of the way. So I think I'm getting a better sense of the timing. As I told you, Monday and Tuesday, I was scratching my head going, what am I missing? I started on Friday with all that crazy action, and I said, Finally, I got it. So it took a while. I had to change the light bulb in the brain, and I got it where I think the market's at. So if you're a buyer, that's where you're a buyer. Stop under there. You're looking for it. There cannot be a sell signal out of this pattern. Even if you went right on through that low, you'd have a higher high, lower and low. When you come over to the momentum, it's still pointing up, and it's not overbought. So higher and lows, higher highs, bias up, target up here. What don't you want to get under? That low, unfortunately. It's pretty far away. When you come to the NASDAQ, not the same. It's not staying over the 18-day average. So it's a bear market rally that culminated, past tense, at the 18-day average. It's got to prove it can run, and so far it's not doing a good job at that. You made it in the Dow. Let's give it congratulations. It had its shot, hit the upper band, hit it uh, today as well and it's coming back down. It's overbought against it. I don't think there's a lot left on it to the upside. Am I bearish? No. There's a difference between saying, I think a market has run its course on something and being bearish. There's no sell signal that I see there, but there's reasons not to be long anymore. We then get to the VIX. And on the VIX, this will take just a second to come in. There we are. It's fighting very clearly here. Now, a tip off for tomorrow, that you're gonna go up in stock indices, I think would be if you took out the lows right here of this 3042. If that were taken out, then I'd be looking fast for a move down to the Bollinger Band. To me, that's one of the tip-offs that I'll be looking at. If it does that, uh, you'd have to go back over this high to prove to me that, oh, it's just a whipsaw type move. Otherwise, that's what I think would happen. In the bonds, is there anything friendly there? In fact, if anything, are you starting to embed? What's embedding? We've talked about it because a lot of you have taken my course on enhanced Bollinger Bands. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Let's make sure I can get back to where I was. Okay, there we are. And I'm going to see if it'll come in. There we are. All right, here's today. Both numbers are under 20. Both numbers are under 20 for Tuesday. Both numbers were under 20 for Monday. So I got three days in a row where they're down, not the fourth day. So at the close of business today, Wednesday, the market said to itself, okay, I'm embedded, which tells me that unless you break through the, today's lows and lo and behold, you're doing that, the pros would sell rallies and try to get short the market. You made the low first, therefore there's nothing that I see that you can do there. In the 10 year, you're in the midst of trying to embed. You haven't done it yet. In the dollar index, you are just stuck. As I said, the market is waiting. 
It's going, ah, which way do I go with this? It's watching, it has to be watching, that all the key interest rates, the two, the five, the 10, they're all over 4%. You're going up and you're now at 4.5% in the two. The market is trying to get to a neutral rate, whatever that might be. Could be four and three quarters, 5%. It's something up there, according to Mr. Bullard, not according to me. That could be where a neutral number is, but that's an assumption that, we start seeing interest, rather CPI fall. As I just said, if we get in and we see that the CPI number, and I especially am talking the core CPI, if that number doesn't start falling, no, then you've got to get ahead of it. Rates got to keep moving over that number. That will cause it to eventually drop. As for the headline number, it's food, it's energy, and energy hasn't been that bearish and food prices have come back. Any of you out there looking at the futures markets on the cattle and hogs, hands up, hands up, go look. They've taken off to the upside. Grains are in harvest, expect them to fall right here. It's typical, you're getting your supply built now. When you look at the Euro currency, this is bearish. Lower highs, lower lows. So I think the pros are selling the market short here at 98.29, some of them. But I don't like the fact that there's a 100-point risk. Yeah, it's 1,200 bucks roughly. What, what do you have to do that for? It's too big of a risk. But that's what I think the trend is now, and they're looking for down here. Why? <sighs> what, what, next week, what's the European Central Bank going to do? They're going to squash the economy. That's why. December British pound. So far, mistrust held off today. The timing was nuts on TV. I thought it was at noon. I read a story that said 5 p.m. They met, first of all, it should have been 5 a.m. And it was New York time. Duh. Or, or 6 a.m. It was right there. Because when I turned on Parliament TV, I just went to it as, as a joke. I'm watching the whole thing. And that had to be... 11 o'clock this morning, 10.30, something like that. Chicago time. You got to be careful with that. Okay. The more I watch, the more I'm getting convinced that uh, they're just going to be calling for her to be out very, very soon. Um, We'll see what the plan is that Mr. Hunt comes up with and how it's absorbed. But the market's marking time. Very dangerous market to trade right now. Another dangerous one. Trader upon trader thinks the Bank of Japan is going to intervene. Number one, the bank said yesterday through two of its members, they are not changing their policy. Yes, they're concerned as you're getting the 150 in the end that it's getting ahead of itself with the weakness. Okay, they might prop it up. Guess what you do when they intervene? Anybody know? Want to raise the hands out there? You got it. All right. So we're trying to break down again in Bitcoin. If it can do it, you get in there. What do I tell you to do when you get this narrow in this neck of this wine bottle? Yeah, think about it. It's a wine bottle on its side. You don't do anything. Let, we'll see which way the fluid comes out of it. I had one of you write me <coughs> wrongly that the differential, all that I'm doing here is measuring the difference of freight, the difference between WTI and Brent, you're entitled to your thoughts. I think you're totally wrong. It's way more than that, and I'm not going into it, but you may want to talk to me at some point about that. When you look at this market, we've come down and on a bear market play, now bear market being the swing line turned down, but you stayed over the 18 day average, you fell into, and now for three days, you're just stuck at that 18 day average of closes. What is next? All right. We listened to Jumpin' Joe today tell American business how to do the oil increase the production. It will have the same ramification as when he ran to the Saudis and did the hand bump and told them that he needed the extra production. That is the same result he's going to get. I can't be any clearer on it. Okay. He needs better advisors. There's ways to get the oil companies to move, but you got to change your policy. You've got to give them a reason that if they're going to invest today, they got to pay back over X amount of years in a minimum. Then they can say, hmm, 
But today, what are they going to do? Well, I'm going to go out and invest in my payback on this well, takes X period of time. And this president, number one, may not be in office. Number two, he's not locking up any policies I can count on. And I should do that when I can make all that money right now and just keep the wells I've got drilled, pre-drilled, let them go. I don't even have to do a lot more drilling. That's what they're doing. So you sit here just like that, you look and you see what's going on. By the way, your ma and pa smaller operators are going to drill more and more. And they're doing fine. They're giving you extra production. The big boys, heating oil. Okay, we're getting down to where now, licking my chops. Not ready to buy. I look outside, we were 32 degrees uh, at O'Hare Airport today. We're gonna be 70 this weekend. So we're at what we get all the time. We're at the wild time of year as the seasons change. We get a few bursts now of the warmer weather will come back, it'll be like spring, but you gotta prepare for the winter months. As prices slip down here, we start looking hard. You're now coming back to support at the 100 day average and the 18 day average of closes. When I come over to Nat Gasno, because you're still at this, you don't have the usage yet. Number two, you need to get, and I've said this to you for five months, you need to get the Freeport, Texas terminal operational so that a lot of the exports we're capable of can get out of there. That's when I think you'll find your low, but it's gotta be fully operational. I don't wanna hear that it's operating at 20 or 30% and you think that's gonna cause the bottom. I don't know how the rest will go. So keep up with it, but those are the events. Until then, you're now three days under the Bollinger Band, four if we stay like this. You pull the rubber band, you're gonna to move to the right-hand side. And if it doesn't move on the right-hand side in a sharp movement, it means it's just gonna keep cratering lower until it reaches whatever saturation point it wants to get to. You know, some of the stuff that I do is I love to teach. And I've worked with so many of the different publications over my five decades in the business, and I pull out things that I think were just great. Modern Trader used to be Futures Magazine. All these articles in one way or the other have become how I even operate today. Can't believe it. You know, do I use uh, Crowfoot? I don't, okay. But I certainly look at uh, flat lines. I look at the patterns. You, in fact, hear me talk about them in different manners as to what the Bollinger Band is doing. The 10 rules to follow, money management, the others, they're incorporated in any trader that's worth his salt. This is a great thing to look at. Uh, we send it to you as a PDF. You open it, you print it, you read it. A lot of this is going to stick with you. How do you get it? Go to our website under free offers on the top left or just take your cursor, move it right up here and you'll see an icon appear. Give it a click and away you go. I'm I Rapstein. I'll talk to you in the morning with my morning flash update on the news. You have a good trading night and day tomorrow. Take care.